Roll Call columnist John Allen is joining us now from Washington to talk about this. Uh, John, good to see you again. What do you make of this feud between the leader of the GOP and the current frontrunner for the presidential race? It's like a college basketball game in the Final Four where a coach is trying to work the refs uh, and starts <laughs> arguing that the calls that they're making are bad and hopes that the calls will start going in the, uh, in the coach's team's favor. I mean, look, Ryan's previous is completely right. The rules have been set for a long time. If you want to be the Republican Party's nominee, you ought to know the rules. Trump knows the rules, or at least folks around him do at this point. I think he doesn't like the fact that uh, it's going to be hard for him to win the 1,237 pledged delegates he needs uh, to win on a, on a first ballot. And that's uh, so he'd like to create a situation where the public believes uh, the rules are rigged, that the rules are the problem rather than his, his inability to win. Jeff, does this actually make a difference, though, with the voters out there? I, you know, he may not win sort of along the political lines, but does it have an impact on voters? It can, and that's certainly the audience. Uh, I think for the most part, it's something that will fire up his base, keep his supporters energized, keep them putting pressure on uh, delegates, uh, both those who are pledged to him and those who uh, might be unbound uh, in either the, the first ballot or on multiple or on, on subsequent ballots at the Republican convention. So I think that's what he's trying to do here is just sort of amp up the pressure. Um, you know, the, I, I understand why he's doing it. It makes sense to do it. But uh, at the end of the day, if he if he's able to undermine the Republican Party's nominating process, uh, I think it'll be a tough day at the GOP headquarters. All right, John, stand by. I want to bring in Anna Palmer. She's a Politico senior Washington correspondent. She's also joining us. Anna, the question I have, and it's a question that we put to Katrina Pearson, uh, his national spokesperson. Uh, this is a candidate who, for the last six months or so, has told the American people that he is the master of the deal, that he knows how to work the system, that he knows uh, how to find uh, compromise, and he knows how to get things done when others can't. And now we find out that he doesn't know the rules of a state's delegation process. Well, I think part of this is hedging bets, right, which is something that businessmen do all of the time. Not only is he trying to actually secure those 1237 as hard votes, uh, delegate votes before the convention, and I think they are working very hard to do that. This is about also creating a narrative that has been part of his campaign the entire time, that Washington is once again disenfranchising the people, the voters. This fires up his base, as John was saying, but it also kind of lends credibility to his argument that if, you know, after the first ballot, if there's some shenanigans, that's something that has been something he's talked about over and over again the past few weeks, that it might bring, you know, some support or, you know, among the delegates to stick with him, even if they might not be necessarily his fervent supporters. John, we spoke with Arizona Senator Jeff Flake earlier. Take a listen to what he had to say about Trump possibly becoming the nominee. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I don't think that he will be the nominee. Uh, his uh, positions on on trade, uh, for example, and on immigration, uh, I, I don't think is uh, where the party needs to be. I'm very concerned about that. Uh, but uh, we're a long way from having a nominee. And, and John, we've been hearing this for months. We've been hearing this, and yet he still leads at this point. Does there need to be sort of a change among members of the party in accepting this a little bit more? Well, I think the key to what Jeff Flake said was uh, he doesn't think where Trump is on immigration and trade or where the party needs to be. He did not say that that's not where the party is. And for the, mm. you know, for the, for the sake of winning the Republican nomination, uh, you know, you've got to be where the Republican Party is. I think there are a lot of people in uh, Washington uh, right now, Republicans, who are hoping that they can get this thing uh, to multiple ballots. Some would like to take out Trump. Others would like to take out Trump and Cruz, but they certainly don't want to see Trump win on the first ballot in Washington, D.C. And uh, Donald Trump is ahead, obviously, of both John Kasich and Ted Cruz by a wide margin here in New York. But after this race, do Kasich and Cruz have a chance of at least stopping Trump from lock, uh, locking up the nomination? I think it's going to be tough, right? I mean, I, it's going to be tough for Trump to get to that number, that 1237 number, but he certainly has momentum. A lot of these contests are in the Northeast, places where you would expect to be much more Trump country than Senator Ted Cruz. There's not as much of an evangelical base there. One of the most interesting states is going to be uh, what happens in California, right? That you see there's been a big shift in terms of where Ted Cruz's operations focus is. They think there might be some inroads they could make there that could try to kind of blunt some of uh, Trump's momentum going into the convention.